thank you for having me and inviting me to this seminar. Uh, so today I will talk about our re most recent paper called Entropy Weighted Regularization, a more general way to debias regularization penalties. So what we just sent in this actually, so we will see what they say about that. But what we do here is that we will look at some way to see if we can debias different kinds of regularization penalties. In this paper, we only studied the lasso rich regularization penalty, but we can imagine that this can be generalized to other different penalties as well. So just to go through some kind of the setting, what we were looking, what we are looking at. So we will only study some sort of linear models in this paper of this forms. So we have some data matrix X, we have some unknown parameters beta, this constructs together the Y matrix, and we have added some additional noise that are considered normal and with some unknown variance sigma squared. So regular linear regression task. In order to find an estimate of beta, we will minimize the L2 squared minimization term of the residuals. And as we often use, we add some regularization penalty to the loss function where G lambda here corresponds to the regularization penalty. We have added of the parameters beta. We have some shape parameters that determines the shape of a regularization term. If we talk about, for example, adapted lasso, this could be the parameters that determines the weights or scad the width of a regularization term or something like that. And the reason for this is that we want to reduce the var variance of estimation in the model. And as we often see, this often comes with a cost due to the variance bias trade-off that if we reduce the var variance, we often increase the bias of the estimator. And so the typical goal is to find an estimator that reduces the variance with a minimal bias increase in the estimation. And this is what also what we will look into. So just to go through some, through some different properties that we often would like to see when we look at a good regularization technique. The first thing is that we would like it to be unbiased or have a very small unbiased in particular for parameters that are far from zero because these are the parameters that are easy to reduce the bias on. We would like it to be consistent, meaning that if we let the number of parameters, the uh, data points go to infinity, the number of n here goes to infinity, then the estimated parameter should converge to the true parameters. We would like it to be continuous with respect to the data that we have. So the par estimated parameter should be continuous with respect to the data. The reason for this is that if we would consider our model set up some sort of a model space, then we would like our estimator to be able to estimate to each specific point in that model space. So we don't skip the true model that is behind in the data somehow. If we also look at some sort of variable selection, we can add a few points here as well. The first one is that we want some sort of sparsity, meaning that the model should be able to estimate uh, parameters to exactly zero if that is needed. For example, Lasso can estimate parameters exactly to zero, so we can find which parameters should be included in the model at the end. And in the same sense, we also want it to be sign consistent meaning that if we let the number of data points go to infinity, then we should estimate the correct sign of each specific data point and let the probability of that go to, zero, uh, to one as well. So that we collect the correct variables in the end model as n go to infinity. Uh, just to a fast recap of typical models that we often see. So in this, uh, paper where we, only, we have only considered regularization techniques that can be expressed as some sort of additional loss contribution in the loss function that we would like to minimize. And also we will only look at regularization penalties that can be split up for a penalty for each specific term. So we, don't, we will not look for regularization penalties like slope or something like that. Uh, so here are a few quite common methods. We have ordinary least squares where we have no regularization term at all. 
We have a lasso, which is just the L1 penalty. We have where we have also this uh, hyperparameter that determines the strength. The rich, which is L2 squared. The bridge, which is a more generalized version between these two. And as probably many of you know, uh, lasso and rich comes with kind of high uh, bias in their estimate, estimations. So there have been some other methods that have tried to reduce the bias. So here we see, for example, SCAD, which has this complicated loss contribution term. And we have adapted lasso, which is basically the lasso term, but we have added some additional weights on each specific term, where the weight is estimated from a previous estimation of beta. As we will see soon, our method is quite similar to this adaptive lasso method. So we also introduce these weights, but we have another way to estimate the proper weights for these uh, regularization terms. If we compare these methods to the different points that we saw earlier, we get this table here, where we see that, for example, lasso uh, fulfills all these different points except for the unbiased part, so which is the reason why it's often very commonly used. And if we look at this different approach that builds on lasso, but tries to min reduce the bias, we can see that they are almost unbiased as well, these methods. But if you look at, for example, which we don't, which don't have this sparsity constraints, they have only con consistency and continuity. And we will see later on how we fulfill these different properties as well. Uh, so if we start looking at the idea behind our paper and our method, is that we would start from the same minimization loss as we had seen earlier with this regularization penalty that can be split it up for a contribution for each specific beta k, which is the parameters that we've seen. But we will, what we will do is now to extend this minimization loss to also include new parameters u that are considered to be weights for each specific regularization term. So we have this regular, regular regularization, for example, lasso or reach penalty, but we have put an additional weight on each specific contribution for each beta k. In addition to that, we have also added an additional regularization term that puts a regularization on the weights u. And the reason for this is that we want some typically constraints on u. We want, don't want it to be negative, and we want it to have a minimum at one, typically for G, G tilde and so on. I will come back to this soon. Uh, we will only consider two different functions here in our paper for the G function, G lambda. And we will only consider it to be the lasso function or the rich function, because they're quite easy to handle in many cases. And we will call these methods for entropy weighted lasso or entropy weighted rich. And the reason for these names is because of the choice of this G tilde function. So the G tilde that we, uh, LG tilde that we will consider is this function here. And you can imagine that we have this term here is quite close to the normally entropy fun uh, function. It's actually not, since we have not normalized this U to be summed up to one, so you cannot consider it to be a uh, distribution over weights, but is quite close to the entropy function. We have actually shifted it due to this uh, minus u term. And the reason for this is that we wanted to have a minimum at one. And the reason that we want this is that if we would increase this hyperparameter gamma, then we would like to force the weights to be very close to one. And by doing so, we can achieve just the regular regularization term that we started from. So we can basically remove these weights from the model by increasing gamma at the end. And we have also added this additional plus one just to put everything so it's positive all the time. Uh, if we now put everything together, we will end up with a minimization problem looking like this. So we have this regular data term. This is L2 term. We have a weighted regularization and an additional regularization on the weights that we have introduced. I noticed here that we actually have now a minimization problem of the double amount of parameters that we started from, since we also minimize over this U that we started from, that we have introduced. 
What's nice about this formulation is that it actually can be solved analytically part-wise. So we can solve for these weights analytically. So by minimizing with respect to the U weights, we will end up with a, with a solution looking like this. So each weight UK uh, will, have, will be e to the power of minus the regularization term for that beta divided by the gamma hyperparameter. And if we now put this into our minimization loss function again, our original loss function will end up with the original minimization problem looking like this. So now we have removed the number of parameters that we have tried to minimize over. We only look at the beta. We get this data matrix, uh, data term restarted, but we get this new regularization term at the end where we have the implicit weightening baked in into this regularization penalty. We are new regulation penalty. Uh, so just a few uh, observations here. So for example, if we use the, the lasso term for G lambda, we end up with this entropy weighted lasso, lasso uh, regulation term. If we put in the rich function, we get the entropy weighted rich term. Just a few observations that can be good to have in mind here is that as I mentioned earlier, if we will let gamma here, for example, go to infinity, this function here will converge to the original regularization penalty that we started from. And that is quite reasoning, reasonable since we basically put all the weights equal to one and we will end up with the same uh, regularization term. Excuse me. Is it possible to ask a question? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you would. It, go ahead. I mean, now, yeah, we can do sure. it now. I mean, from, from my sake, it's yeah, or for the too. seminar's sake, it's fine. I yeah. was wondering what about, uh, let's say, convexity of this function, of this objective function. Uh, can you tell anything about convexity in beta, convexity in U? What about? Yeah, I, I will come to that soon. Ah, sorry. sorry. So sorry. I, will, I will come to that. Uh, the next, we can also see here that. If we let, for example, lambda, uh, lambda divided by gamma go to infinity, then this term here, so the e to the power of this term will basically be zero if that goes to infinity, except for when beta is equal to zero itself. So what we will end up with is basically gamma times the indicator function if beta is separated from zero or not. So basically you're counting the number of parameters separated from zero. So we can think of this as sort of a, combination between the two where we can slide between the two different regularization penalties, the original and the indicator regularization term. Okay, so I will start to go through a few theoretical results for this, with that we have achieved for this uh, regularization terms. I have four different theorems. I will mention the theorems, talk a little bit about them and just a short outline of how the proof is done. I will not go into the details, but just some sort of overview of the two proofs. So as you mentioned earlier, uh, this regularization term is not convex, which could be a problem. But what we can see is that if we add this data term here, we can make the problem convex by proper choice of our hyperparameters. So in this case, for this typically theorem, we will let S1 squared be the smallest eigenvalue of X transpose X. And we will also assume that this is positive. So we have full rank in this matrix. Then we know that this minimization problem of entropy weighted lasso problem is convex whenever gamma is larger than lambda squared divided by S1 squared. So we get some sort of a condition on when our minimization problem will be convex in the end, even if our regularization term is not convex by itself. Uh, just a short outline of the proof of this. We will look at each specific orphan of our domain in RP by itself and studying when is it convex within that orphan. And we see that by doing, we can only look at Hessian of that orphan and see, look at the eigenvalues of the Hessian. We can then combine the different orphans in RP two and two together and build up the whole domain again. But by doing so, we can expand each specific function within that orphan to a bit larger domain and then 
puzzle them together by looking at the maximum of where these domains overlap. Uh, hope you understand roughly what I mean with this. But we can basically build up the whole space by combining subspaces two and two together. Uh, the next theorem I would like to mention is a little bit more general, but also assumes that we have some sort of a nice amount of data in comparison to the number of the estimated parameters that we need to know. So if we assume that this gamma here depends on n, and that gamma n divided by n converges to some gamma zero, and the same thing for lambda, and we assume that this x transpose x divided by n converges to some matrix C that is non-singular, and that we have some f that is non-convex from the start, then we know that the estimation of beta, called beta tilde here, that the minimization of this problem, oh, sorry, will converge to the minimum of this function z that can be expressed as this, where we have defined this regularization term here to be zero whenever lambda zero or gamma zero is equal to zero. And what we can take away from this is that if gamma n or lambda n don't, doesn't grow too fast with a number of data points, then the estimation of beta will be consistent since this term here will be zero and we will end up with only this data term, which will have a minimum at the true parameters beta star that is, is considered with true data points. And some mention, some things I like to mention here is here is P is fixed. So P does not depend on N. I will come back later to what happens if P, P does depend on N later on, but in this case, it does not. Uh, some outline of a proof of this is basically we define this function Zn that depends on n, which is basically our uh, minimization problem that we started with, but divided with n everywhere. Uh, and our statements are proved as long as we can show that the square moment of our beta in our some, sort of, some compact set of an absolute value of a difference between our uh, Zn minus z minus this uh, sigma squared divided by two converging probability towards zero. So we have some convergence criteria on this function. And we also need that the estimation of beta is bounded or, or, order, or of order, order some constant. Uh, and to prove this, the first statement is quite easy. Since we have these conditions on lambda and gamma, we can basically just put it in and see that it will converge towards zero in probability. The second statement we can prove quite easily by finding some sort of bounding ball where the solution must be within. And since this bounding ball is fixed, we know that the solution must be of order of some constant. And this is basically how we build up a proof for this. Uh, the next theorem I would like to mention is a bit longer and needs a little more explanation. Uh, but we have some assumptions here for some matrices C11 and C21. These matrices can be explained as if we look at the X transpose X matrix and look at some blocks, some block matrices of that product where we define the C11, C21, C12, and C22, as the C11 here corresponds to the true parameters, col the columns in X of the true parameters times itself. So if we would imagine that we split it up the beta coefficients into true parameters and false parameters, meaning that true parameters are separated from zero, false positivity equals zero. Then C11 here corresponds to the columns of X that corresponds to the true parameters times itself. And the C21 corresponds to false columns transposed times the true columns. Hope you understand what I mean when I say this. So we have some bounding conditions on these matrices as they grow with N. Uh, under the infinity norm, 
We also have some conditions on how lambda n and gamma n changes with a number of data points that we have. And also that we'd like to mention a bit more about is this uh, condition on the true parameters beta that it should not converge too fast towards zero. So we get some sort of a bounding that it should not be within some interval close to zero in order to separate it from the true and false par parameters. I will come back to why this is the case in our proof. Uh, so what this basically say is that if we look at the minimization objective for the entropy weighted lasso method, where we have a lasso regularization up here in the exponent, then with a probability at least something that converging towards one, L would have a local minima beta bar such that with a probability converging to one, we would be very close to the true parameters in of the model, and we will also have a correct sign of estimation as a sign of the true parameters in the true model. This mean is that as long as we have a unique minimum of our objective, then we will have both consistency since we, we will converge towards the true parameters, but we will also have sign consistency since we will have a correct sign of each parameter in our model estimation in comparison to the true parameters. So this basically achieves both consistency and sign consistency. And here we can actually allow P to depend on N as well, as long as it doesn't not increase too fast in comparison to the number of data points. So just a short uh, outline of a proof of this. Uh, I would like just to mention that this term here, the data term can actually be expressed as something like this, where we have split it up in different components, where we have the norm of the noise term, we have this x transpose x times beta minus the true parameters from both sides, but we also get this specifically contribution here, which can be seen as a random, what's said here can be seen from a normally distributed random vector with mean zero and covariance matrix x transpose x divided by n. So we can split this up in different components while the regularization term is still the same. If we now also split up the beta parameter into considered true parameters and false parameters, so the true values of this false parameter should be equal to zero. So we basically are split it up between true and false parameters in beta. Then we can set up the KKT conditions for optimality in this case, where the first conditions can be expressed as this equation, the first equation here, which is basically equations for the true parameters. And the second conditions would be for the false parameters. And since we don't, our minimization loss is not differentiable at zero, we will get these subgradients conditions here where we have some marginal where the gradients can be within for these parameters. Okay, so in order to show these KKT conditions, we will use something, we will use the Newton's method, the convergence rate of Newton's method and show that the estimated parameters for the true parameters will converge well within the same orphans as the true parameters of those of those betas. So since Newton's method converges quadratically, if we now start at the true parameters, we can show that the, the minimum of this loss function cannot be too far away from the origin, from the true parameters as n grows to infinity. And this is the reason why we wanted the true parameters not to be too close towards zero, since we want the solution to be within the same orphan as the original parameters, the true parameters. After doing this, we can later on show, since we have conditions on uh, lambda n, we can show that this solution will also fulfill this second constraint, the second KKT condition, and show that this is actually a proper solution for our minimization function. So this way we can show that we can be 
both consistent and side consistent since everything converges within the same orphan and it, the difference from a new method will be so small from the true parameters as n goes to infinity. Okay, the final theorem that I would like to mention is regarding the entropy weighted rich the minimization task, where we look at convexity for this task. So as I mentioned earlier, this is not a convex regression penalty. So we need to look at when can the whole, the whole minimization problem be convex. And this has shown to be if gamma, lambda here is smaller, some constant times this S1 squared, the smallest eigenvalue of X transpose X matrix. Uh, which, and what I find quite interesting here is that this does not depend on gamma, which I found quite interesting. Uh, but yeah, and the outline of the proof here is quite simple. We basically calculate the Hessian and check for positive eigenvalues of a Hessian. Since everything is differentiable, we don't really need to do anything special thing here to separate into subdomains and so on. Okay, so just to summarize the results that we have seen here, we have seen that these conditions for the first methods I mentioned, and if we add our methods as well, we see that as long as we stay convex, we will have the same properties that we have seen earlier, for, for example, scatter and adapted lasso. So basically, we have the same properties as the original regularization task, but we can add this unbiased part as well, since these methods will reduce the bias, especially for large parameters. And we can see this as well if we look at these regular figures that often is seen for these kinds of regularization penalties. So here we can see if we have only one data point and one parameters in the model where we try to fit to the data point. So in the x-axis here, we see the data point that we have got. In the y-axis, we can see the estimated parameter. So optimally here would be if we would estimated our estimator to be on this diagonal line so that beta is equal to the data point that we have seen. For adaptive lasso, we see this some sort of... Uh, plateau here in the middle where we estimate the parameters to zero. Outside of that, we see that it's quite fastly converged to the true line, a diagonal line. The same thing for SCAD where we have this plateau and lasso-like uh, sections, but then is unbiased for larger values. If we now look at our methods, so if we look at entropy weighted lasso, we still have these plateaus that we have inherited from the lasso penalty, but outside we behave quite similar to the adaptive lasso that we reduce the bias quite fastly and goes towards this diagonal line. If we now look at entropy weighted lasso, but we don't have the convexity part, so we have chosen the hyperparameter, so it's not, not convex, mm -hmm. then we see this jump here that we typically see for uh, the bridge estimator, for example, if gamma is smaller than one. So we have lost the continuity part of the estimator. If we instead look at entropy with the rich, we see that it behaves quite similar to the rich estimator for small values, but for larger values, we reduce the bias quite a lot. And we can see this with different gamma as well. So the gamma here is the parameter that determines the width of the, of the regularization part. Okay, so before I go into some different experiments, I will just go through quickly of how we have optimized these different regression techniques. So if we start with entropy weighted lasso, we will do this by a gradient uh, coordinate descent, descent, which we typically can see that we do in the lasso estimator as well. So the gradient, the coordinate wise derivative here is given by this formula where which we typically, the raw G here, we typically see when we do coordinate wise of lasso as well, which is basically the column corresponding to beta J transposed the residual, we have loosened the variable J from the estimator. Uh, but we also see this gradient term of our regularization penalty. And since it's not differentiable, differentiable we get this subgradient uh, function. Uh, what's nice about this is that we can actually solve this analytically for each specific condition of beta. 
And the solution will be something like this, uh, where we have the condition, if rho j is larger than lambda, we get this expression. If absolute value of rho j is smaller than lambda, it's put to zero, as we typically see in the lasso as well. And what we see here is that this uh, w here is the Lambert v function which is typically the inverse of a function x times e to the power of x, which is typically seen here since we have beta j and e to the power of beta j. And this can be reformulated as this. And what we see here is that as long as uh, rho j go to infinity, this first term here will converge to one. And if rho j converts to, to uh, lambda, the whole term here will converge to zero. So it will be continuous as long as we have convexity of the problems. We have this condition on lambda and gamma as long as that is fulfilled. And just to summarize everything up, we will end up with a training algorithm looking like this. So iterate between the different parameters. We calculate rho. If rho is larger than lambda, we put beta equal to this expression here. If it's smaller than lambda, we put it zero, and we do this until some sort of convergence loop. Uh, if we look at the entropy weighted rich, uh, we start this, since we cannot solve for the coordinate wise in itself, we get an expression if we look at coordinate grade descent here that is hard to solve analytically. So our approach here is just to start from original minimization loss where we both minimize on the beta and u from start and separate this into two different minimization tasks, both over beta and over u. And what's nice here is that we can solve for the parameters analytically if we only study for beta and u by itself. So if we only minimize the beta, we will end up with a solution looking like this which is typically the rich solution, rich penalty solution, but with different weights. And if we minimize over u, we will end up with a solution like this, as we saw earlier. Uh, you can argue that this is not a very efficient way to solve it, since we get this inverse of a x transpose x matrix, which is of order n cubed, which is not very efficient, but this is not really something that we have looked into that much in this paper. We basically just wanted to see how well the method works overall. Okay, and to summarize, we can see this string algorithm here. So you basically just loop until convergence and solve for beta and u independently of each other and iterate this until convergence. Okay, so in order to test these methods, we have done this in uh, two different experiments. The first experiment is where we have a sample of the X data matrix X and the true covariates beta star independent of each other and where the columns of X is independent of each other and also the beta star. We have sampled the data from the considered true model. We have also added this noise term from a normally normal distribution with independently and with some noise sigma squared, where sigma is varied in some interval between zero and 40. Just to check how well does it behave in different noise conditions that we have. Sorry. In experiment two, we have done quite similar thing, but instead of varying the noise levels in the noise in the data, we instead changed the amount of correlation that we have in the columns of the data matrix X. So we basically change the correlation, but fix the noise levels. But the true covariance beta star is sampled the same way as in before and independently of each other. And the data is sampled from the true, is generated by the true model. Okay, so when we have tested this, we will get results looking like this. So here we have the different methods that we have seen earlier. So li ordinary linear regression, lasso rich, that's lasso scout. Uh, but we have also tested with our methods, both where we have forced our method to be convex, but also when we have made it possible for mo model both to be non-convex and convex, convex, whatever is best for the estimator. We have done this by looking at the difference between the estimated parameters and the true parameters in L2 squared norm, but also on the mean square error on a separate validation set. 
And if we look at experiment one, where they change the noise levels, we can see that, for example, linear regression and rich is quite similar to each other. Lasso is better and is quite similar to our convex anthropoweighted rich regularization technique, which is quite uh, similar to the lasso, which I find quite interesting. And the other method is quite methods are quite similar to each other. Uh, we can't really see any significant difference between them. Uh, what's interesting here is that this is true both for the anthropoweighted convex and weighted lasso, but also the non-convex. So it's quite almost no difference here if it's convex or not, actually. And we can see this in both plots. So it's no improvement for our sake, but it's not making anything worse. And I will mention shortly about sooner what some pros and cons about why I think our method could be used in some cases. Uh, if we look at experiment two, we get plots like this. So as we've seen before, we increase the correlation in the data matrix. We can see here that linear regression and rich is still quite similar to each other. Lasso here is better, but not as good as the other methods that we see here. Our convex and weighted rich is quite worse than lasso. Uh, we can't really explain why. It could be either the formulation of a problem overall, or it's just the minimization training algorithm that is not that well behaved. Uh, my guess is, is the training algorithm, but I'm not really sure that it converges very, very, very slow and therefore can't really find, but I don't really know. I'm open for suggestions if anyone has a theory on that. Uh, if we look at the other methods, we see here as well that the anthropoweighted rich is worse than the other methods. Uh, again, it could be the training algorithm, I don't know. But the anthropoweighted lasso is quite similar to SCADA and adaptive lasso. We can't really find a significant difference here that anyone should be better or worse than the other. And this is seen in both plots as well, as you can see. Uh, so you could argue a little bit why should we bother to use this method when we have, for example, adapted lasso or SCAD. Uh, and our reasoning here is that, uh, for example, that the last you need to fit everything in two steps, while our method is more like a one fitting only. You only need to fit the parameters once and still get the same results, basically. And from some experiments that we have done, we have seen that SCAD can sometimes be quite unrobust to some task where our task is R is more robust in some sense to sign consistency and so on. If you want to know more about that, we can talk about it later, or I can show you the paper later on. You can read the paper later on about more about that. Uh, so just talk about some eventual future work that we have talked about to look into, but we have not done yet. And I'm open for suggestions here as well. So something that we would like to talk check if this can be used with some sort of a neural network setting. Since we are looking quite much at neural networks as well in other papers, we would like to see if this can be used in neural network settings as well. Here is quite hard since neural networks is not convex from the beginning. Then it's hard to really know what type of parameters of lambda and gamma is suitable in this sense. Since our regulation plant is not convex, can it still be used in some good way here? Another question is, is there an efficient way to find sort of optimal values of lambda and gamma? For less, we often have these screening rules where you can iterate efficiently to find different, to, to validate the method for different lambdas. But here we have two hyperparameters and we cannot really use the features that we see in lasso in the same sense if the parameter paths will not be linear as we see in, or sublinear as we see in the lasso paths. Uh, we asked, also get, got su asked actually a suggestion from uh, Jonas that we should use some sort of additional regularization term in form of some additional uh, reach penalty to our uh, origin, original uh, regularization term in order, and by doing this, we can actually guarantee convexity without any consideration of this S1 term here. Uh, this could be used, but I think that 
I think that this will lead to something that is quite close to elastic net, since this will enforce our gamma to be quite large, giving our, our penalty to be quite close to the original one and giving us something quite close to rich elastic net. But I'm not really sure, but that is something that could be quite interesting to look into. Uh, and finally, uh, here we have in our paper, we have quite just picked a regularization term for the weights, this entropy weighted uh, some sort of regularization term. But basically it could be something that is more suitable or basically could be proved to be theoretically more suitable to put the regularization term on the weights. So that is something that maybe could be picked optimally in some regard. And that would be quite interesting to look at as well. Uh, yeah, so that is some future aspects that we could think of looking at. And that is basically what I've had in mind to talk about here. So I will just like to say thank you for listening and I'm open for questions or just discussions overall, if there's something that people would like to comment.